Who here has come home from school feeling exhausted and stressed? Anyone? I know I have. Talks with teachers and friends made me think about it even more. And it made me start to question that. So when I found out we were making TED Talks, I thought it would be a great idea to provide solutions to this problem so my peers and I will have a less stressful school day. So through research, I found that other states and countries have different methods of supporting their students, which I would like to try. And here I am today to share them with you. First, I'd like to talk about improving stress management in middle schools in America. According to the Scholastic News article, Tame the Stress Monster, 77% of teens are super stressed. It also says that the number one thing stressing teens out is school. Here are some side effects of being super stressed. Crying more often or being mad over nothing, ditching old friends and family to hang out with new people, and eating less. Being super stressed also leads to depression. That upsets me because school's great and has lots of opportunities, but I can see where this is coming from. For me, the top thing that stresses me out is homework. Sometimes I spend hours on homework and extracurricular activities, and I won't be able to do anything for the rest of the night. I get very grumpy and tired after, which affects my peers, and I don't want that. There is more to life than academics. We have family and friends to hang out with, sports to pursue, and new experiences to try. If academics keep us from doing those things, where would we be when school ends? What we need is balance. At the beginning of the year, I had a hard time finding that balance. As juggling around uh, sports, clubs, extracurriculars, and learning an instrument, family, and homework to top it off. Eventually, certain clubs were done with, but that's when the homework got rough. Like I said, I spent a really long time working on homework, pretty much till I went to sleep. It took a toll on me. I believe it caused me to be less productive, and I haven't been able to do what I love, which affects my mental health. From a PBS article, Faced with Outside Stress, these Baltimore students learn how to take a deep breath. Baltimore students from Patterson High in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, did something to help their students' stress levels because Baltimore has high unemployment and violent crime rates, almost twice the national average. These things add significant <coughs> stress in students, so several public schools are helping to stop that by doing mindfulness programs. The people who are in the mindfulness group in Patterson High feel, love the group and feel more relaxed when they walk into the room where they practice, practice mindfulness through yoga. It is a place where students go when they're stressed and need a break. A student in the mindfulness program said, my day is so stressful. As soon as I walk into the room, I don't even need to do exercises. There's just a big smile on my face because I'm here. So an option could be that Clinton Middle School or other American schools can have a recess group involving mindfulness yoga or an after school group that would run every day because you never know when a stressful event would pop up. I can definitely use some mindfulness yoga methods while doing homework or take a break and do a few stretches we learned in the club. I assume it wouldn't be hard to do during rec, because really what the teachers need to do is just open up a room and supervise the children who want to do it. And the children in the club can uh, come up with their own strategies or look up videos on YouTube. Next, I believe American middle schools can foster more creativity in the classroom. A British author, Sir Ken Robinson, once said in his TED Talk, Do Schools Kill Creativity? Our education system is predicated on the idea of academic ability. And the consequence is that many highly talented, brilliant people think that they are not because the thing that they were good at at school wasn't valued or was actually stigmatized. 
Based on the article, Creativity in Schools, What Schools Do or Don't Do, from Education Weekly, Korea is an example of a country emphasizing creativity, critical, critical thinking, and character building in their curricula. Since 2009, Korea expects its schools to foster creativity as, a, as part of a quality subject-based learning, but also devote 10% of overall school time to projects and other activities that foster creativity. Since we can't do something as big as Korea, we made an art wall in our school where students can display their artwork for their peers to see, uh, based on the monthly positivity trait. For example, this month's trait is humor. I love art, but sometimes I don't have a reason or the motivation to make it, so I don't. This would definitely get my creative juices flowing. Last, I want to talk about the topic of sleep, because I believe it also impacts how well students do in middle school. Jim Davis from Harvard stated, if the goal of our educational system includes high-functioning, healthy students, then educators have to prioritize something alongside academic mastery and social wellness. We have to prioritize sleep. Well, we obviously cannot have teachers pull out blankets and pillows and we fall asleep on rows of desks, but The Atlantic said, in Finland, classes start every day between 8 and 9 a.m with a hot lunch served every day and minimal homework after school. Teachers typically give students a 15 minute break for every 45 minutes of instruction. Research has shown that this keeps students fresh and more focused throughout the day. However, doing this would be hard to accomplish. So a different option is that maybe at the end of the school day, we can have a one to three minute stretch and talk. Doing, doing this may take time out of students' learning, but we can always do the talk, talking based on what the students just learned. A couple other options I brainstormed were to allow students from, to stand from sitting all day in front of a computer or in school. During quarantine, this would have been especially important because children are staring at their computers 28 to 42 hours a week, not including homework. I was completely online for three-fourths of the year last year, and I definitely got very antsy from sitting all day. If we go back online and try one or more of these techniques, I believe I'll be less antsy and I'll be able to focus more. Not to mention, COVID-19 has taught us so much and we cannot forget it. It uprooted underlying problems in the school system, such as students' mental health, and we cannot forget about it. COVID has been traumatic, but the only way to improve is to look at the problem straight in the face and make time to fix it. That being said, there are some things we can do to help the stress levels in schools. But in the meantime, an article from Science Daily says, research has shown that chewing gum can improve concentration and visual memory tasks. So maybe our first step can be as simple as teachers letting us chew gum in class. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk.